Apple finally fixed multitasking on the iPad with iPad OS 26, making it an extremely viable laptop replacement for really the first time ever, completely freeing up the UI to make it feel more like a MacBook. The only problem is this. This is the new M4 MacBook Air that just so happens to still be on sale for only $850 on Amazon while packing 16 gigs of RAM and the most performance we've ever seen in a MacBook Air with that M4 chip. Meanwhile, the M4 iPad Pro, especially this 13 inch model is currently $1,179 on Amazon, but it only has eight gigs of RAM. But don't forget this magic keyboard case. If you wanna use it like a laptop, that's gonna be another $270 bringing the total to 1,449 bucks for this premium experience. But for 850 bucks for a full on incredible Mac OS Tahoe experience with such great specs on this MacBook Air, it's almost impossible to beat. So with that said, in terms of choosing which one of these is right for you, let's first get into the six major benefits that you get with choosing the iPad Pro instead of the MacBook Air and why it could actually be way worth it for you. Benefit number one is the better display. This thing comes with the Ultra Retina XDR display, which uses tandem OLED technology, which is basically one of the best displays ever with incredible colors and incredible contrast, fully black levels versus grays that you can see on the MacBook Air because it has an LCD display, especially if you turn off the lights. Of course, you have a thousand nits of standard brightness versus only 500 on the Air, and this thing goes up to 1600 nits HDR as well. This also goes up to 120 hertz ProMotion refresh rate versus only 60 hertz static all the time. So the iPad Pro display is by far better. For advantage number two, this thing of course is a touchscreen, which MacBooks do not have touchscreens ever. They never had. So with the iPad Pro, you get the touchscreen, which means you also have Apple Pencil support, which means it works for artists and everybody else. It's just so nice to have. For benefit number three, this thing is basically a two and one. Just take off the iPad and now you have a nice casual iPad experience, which is comfortable to hold in your hands, jump on the couch, enjoy some media, movies, whatever else. So nice because you cannot do that with the MacBook Air. For benefit number four, if you are gonna be playing some games, you honestly get a much better experience with the iPad Pro with all the games you have in the massive library and all the optimizations versus games don't really run that well on the MacBook Air. Sure, you can play some of those games from iOS on the MacBook Air with the trackpad, but it is nowhere near as good as this touchscreen experience. For number five, this is a small one. Of course, you get a camera on the back of the iPad Pro, which you can use for photos, video recording, whatever. You can hold it up in a concert, which is hilarious. And you also have a LiDAR for those unique AR apps. And for number six, we finally get somewhat comparable multitasking with iPad OS 26. No more of that weird multitasking trash that we had with Stage Manager where it limits you on the inside of the display, looks really weird. You couldn't really resize windows that well, but now you have the menu bar with more control. You have windows that you can resize. You can open a bunch of them at the same time, stack them on top of each other. It's so nice that you finally have that. And now with that said, let's get into the benefits of the M4 MacBook Air with number one being more ports. Yes, instead of just one Thunderbolt 3 port on the iPad Pro, the M4 Air gets MagSafe 3 for charging, so a dedicated charging port, and you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports which means you can plug in more accessories and devices, especially high bandwidth devices. You also have a headphone jack right here on the side, which you do not get with the iPad. The only nice thing about the iPad Air is that right here on the hinge of the Magic Keyboard, you can use that as a pass-through charging port, which frees up the main Thunderbolt port for your accessories and other devices. And the even nicer thing about the MacBook Air is that it supports even better docks and hubs 
like this genius 7-in-1 HDMI docking station from our sponsor Mokin that honestly killed it by combining a dock and a Qi 2 wireless charger in one device. The really nice thing is that once you connect it to an external display, you have a really nice and clean setup unlike traditional hubs that get in your way. Instead, this has a MagSafe phone charger and an AirPods charger as well. And on top of that, it has two USB-A ports and a USB-C port, as well as PD 3.0 that conveniently charges my MacBook Air and my iPhone at the same time while displaying 4K 60 to my external display. The wireless charger also goes up and down to give you the best angle, which is nice. And it's also not super expensive at only 45 bucks during Prime Day. It's crazy that you get that many features packed into one device and I've been super happy with it, so I hope you will as well. So with that said, go ahead and check it out by using the links in the description and pinned comment below. Now moving on to benefit number two, the MacBook Air has an arguably much better productivity experience like let's say video editing because you get much better format support, you get the best plugin support across all your editing plugins, whether you're using Safari, the web, much better plugins, and you have full featured support for those video editing apps and other apps versus watered down apps that you get with iPadOS. For benefit number three, the MacBook Air has a really nice 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is great for watching movies and shows, while the iPad Pro has a very square-ish aspect ratio, which is a bit annoying when watching content because you have these huge blocks on the top and the bottom, which makes it look kind of ugly compared to a more immersive and nice experience on the MacBook Air. For benefit number four, the M4 MacBook Air actually has better CPU performance because it comes with the 10 core CPU right away at the base price, while the M4 iPad Pro actually only comes with a nine core CPU with one of the performance cores disabled. And in order to get the full 10 cores, you have to go with at least one terabyte of storage, which also gives you 16 gigs of RAM, which you already have with the base MacBook Air. And this gets super expensive with that. And for benefit number five, the MacBook Air also has much better external display support because it supports up to two 6K displays at the same time while using the MacBook's display while the iPad Pro only supports one 6K display. The MacBook Air also supports high refresh rate external displays like let's say 144 Hertz or even let's say 240 Hertz and beyond. You can power it with the MacBook Air while on the iPad Pro only 60 hertz refresh rate no matter what. So you can't even get the same 120 hertz gaming that you can with the main display. For update number six, multitasking is arguably still better on the MacBook Air because Finder, Finder is a beast. It's so much more capable than the Files app on iPadOS, like let's say you have multiple tabs for moving files back and forth, organizing, keeping stuff open so you can remember it for later. It's so much more convenient. And macOS itself is not limited in terms of how many apps you can open, while iPadOS 26 I think is limited to 12 at a time. No more than that. And you get much better customization for everything on the MacBook Air. And for benefit number seven, this thing supports much better file extensions, like let's say DMD G app files, which means you could pretty much download any app from the web and use it and run it while the iPad is limited to only what you have on the app store. No side loading or anything, which is very, very annoying. So with all of that said, which one of these should you actually buy? Well, if you're looking for the best possible multitasking experience, including the best productivity work, then it's the MacBook Air for sure, because it's only $850 and it has much better support. It's also got the best flex flexibility with more ports, better display support, better app and file extension support, better multitasking. It's basically the best way to go if you don't feel like being locked down or limited in any way. The only people who should be choosing the iPad Pro instead are those who care just as much about having a premium casual iPad use experience as they do having a productive work experience. So if you find yourself enjoying content on your iPad, 
iPad, using apps, using the Apple Pencil, playing games, while only doing a little bit of multitasking productive work, then heck yes, buy the iPad Pro because it's gonna be more enjoyable for those casual use cases, while also being able to pass as a laptop replacement for when you really need it. So let me know your thoughts on the iPad Pro with iPadOS 26 down in the comment section below, and definitely subscribe above for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.